Hi everyone, hope you're all keeping well. Today I want to talk with you about the parable of the talents that Jesus was teaching his disciples. It is a parable that we can all learn and um, it talks about a rich man who was going on a long journey so he called his servants and he gave one servant five talents and the other servant two talents and another servant one talent so and what happened was he went on a journey and uh, he entrusted these people one person five talents the other one two talents and the other person one talent so a talent is a, a lot a big sum of money those days so he entrusted all three servants with different amounts of money and then the one who had the five talents went and invested the money and he um, increased five more talents and the other person who had the two talents he also went and invested the money and he um, increased his talents by another two but the other person who had one talent what he said was he said oh my master is um, uh, I don't want to uh, do anything with his talent I'm gonna hide it under the ground and he didn't do anything with his talent so we're just gonna read it from Matthew chapter 25 verse 12, 14 to 30 again it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them to one he gave five gold talents and to another two gold talents and to another one each according to his ability then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five talents more. Also to the one who had two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five and said, Master, here, here you are. I, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my, your master's happiness. Then the man who brought two talents also came to the master and said, You entrusted me with two talents. I have gained two more. And his master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put in charge of you many things. Come and share your master's happiness. But the man who had received one talent came and said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not settled. So I will, I'm afraid I went out and hid your go talent and see here is what is belong to you. His master replied, You lazy and wicked servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Why then you should have put my money to deposit with the bankers so that when I return I would have received it back with interest. So he took the bag, took the talent from him and gave it to the one who had ten talents. For whoever has will be given more and they will have it in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and thrown to a worthless uh, and thrown and and throw that the worthless servant outside into the darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is the story that uh, Jesus talks about to his disciples. It's called the parable of the talents. So each one was given talents. So as you, as I read to you, one was given five talents, the other one was given two talents, and the other one was given one talent. And so we can learn a lot of things from this. So God entrusts each and every one of us talents. God has given me a different talent, for you a different talent. Some people God gives more talents, some people 
God gave few talents, but it depends on whatever talent you have been given, God expects something back. So we're going to learn about it today. This, first of all, this parable teaches us the success of a product of our work. So it talks that God placed Adam and Eve in the garden and said to work on the garden and take care of the garden. So God expe ex expect us to work and not to be lazy and just wait till everything fall on our lap. But God expect us to work hard because that's what he wants. He wants us to work hard. So as Christians, as believers of going to um, believers of children of God, we have to we know that we have um, a pass to go to heaven but it's not a free pass it's it we have to work towards it every day we work towards it it's not like we are we are waiting for the bus but we are working towards going to heaven so when we are working it means that whatever talents God has given and in um, entrusted you with we have to use it because he's going to come one day and ask from each and every one of us Naomi with time what did you do with the money what did you do what did you do with your talents what did you do he will he's going to ask us so we have to be ready we have to be working so first of all it uh, it shows uh, the success of person who's working so it says um, it it doesn't have to be like a work workplace but whatever talents God has given you it might be a mother who's looking after the children at home stay at home mom but what are the talents God has given you are you are you doing that are you using that talent so uh, that is the first one first this parable teaches us the success is a product of our work to be successful you have to work so that shows the parable the second one it shows in the parable is the talents teaches us that god always gives us everything we need to do what what he has called us to do so the the master left the talents to each of the servants he didn't go and not leave anything for the servants but he gave all three servants all of them he gave something so for god God gives everyone. God has, God, there's nobody in the whole world who doesn't have something that God has given to be used. So all of us have been given a talent. All of us have been given an ability. Um, uh, uh, everyone is unique and everybody has been given a talent. And in Ephesians uh, chapter 2 verse 10 it says, For we are all God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So he has prepared in advance for you and me to do. So all of us are God's handiwork. And then the third one we can learn from this parable is, the parable of the talents teaches that we are not all created equal. So all of us are different, all of us. We all look different, we all talk different, the way we look at it, everything we do is different. But even though we are different, God gives everyone a talent. So even though we are all different, that is why the reward given by the master is the same. The master measures success by whatever you have done. So for the one who had the five talents, when he has increased another five, the master was very pleased and said, come, enjoy and stay with me. And for the one who had the two talents, even though he had only two talents and the other one had five talents, the one who had two talents have increased uh, their two talents to another two talents. So he still was given, he was still rewarded because he, whatever talents that that person had, he used it. So he was given reward for it. But the person who had one talent, he didn't use it. So he didn't have any reward. The parable of the talent teaches that we work for the master, not for our own selfish purposes. The fourth reason is 
uh, the parable is teaching us that we are we have been given our talents not for our selfish reasons not for our selfish purposes but we have been given our talents to the glory of god to to work for the master to the glory of god to be used for god's glory so for you and us all of us have been created in uh, god's image all of us have been created for a reason that is to glorify god so our talents whatever talents god has given us it has to be used for god's glory not for our selfish selfish purposes not that we go and we work and we only look after our family only only take care of ourselves but we have been we have to look after everyone who's in needy who, who has a need and also his kingdom that his kingdom will um, we have to preach the good news so for the good news to be preached we have to send people out so we have to help in the ministry we have to help as many people in God's family so all of our talents and abilities that God has given us we have not to only use for our selfish purposes but for God's kingdom for God's glory so we should maximize the use of our talents not for our own selfish purposes but to honor god we know that we work in a fallen world because of the curse of sin our work will be difficult but we should feel satisfaction and joy from doing our best with god with what god has given us in the place where his providence puts us in okay and then the fifth one is the parable of the talents show that we will be held accountable so that is the fifth and important reason that in the parable it teaches that the master came back and he asked each and every one of the servants what did they do with their talents so the one who had the five he had to be accountable for more he had to tell what he did with the five talents the one who had two he had to be accountable for the two and he had to tell what he did with the two and the one who had one he uh, was accountable he didn't you do anything with his talent he, he didn't use it at all so he was accountable for what he didn't do the parable of the talent is not about salvation or work of righteousness but about how we use our work to fulfill our earthly calling it is called stewardship the unfaithful steward is in this parable didn't so much waste the master's money he wasted an opportunity so the one who had the one uh, talent and didn't use it he didn't only waste ma the master's money but he wasted the opportunity to be increased the opportunity to have favor from the master so if we don't use our talent we lose the opportunity to be favored from god to be blessed by god to be um, multiplied whatever we use god will multiply it so uh, let's say with so much difficulty if you give someone something god will multiply you he says that he is not a debtor to anyone and if you give and god will give you back and press down shaken together running over he will give to us more than that he will give to us so god is not any debtor to anyone and and whatever you give to god's kingdom he will give a hundredfold back to you so we have to be responsible we have to be responsible and accountable so this is a beautiful uh, beautiful parable that jesus told his disciples he teached his disciples this parable to teach them that we have to the the disciples had to use any possible talent that they have been given by god for god's glory because it all belongs to god so i hope you'll be encouraged about this and uh, if you want to read this read it in matthew chapter 25 um, verses 14 to 30 it talks about the parable and so i hope we can all be encouraged and so let, let's think about the five things the first one is the parable teaches us the success of the productive work so we should be working whatever talents we have we should be doing something about it not keeping it to ourselves and 
the second one is the parable teaches us that God always gives everything we need. So God gives everything. God provides us and what we, what God has given, we have to use it. And the third one is, it teaches that we are not all equal. Everyone gets a different. One person will have five talents, the other person will have two talents, the other person will have one talent. Even with the one talent, what are you going to do with it? That's the question. And then the next one is, the parable of the talents teaches us that we work for the master, not for our selfish purposes. So it's a reminder for you and me that we have been given our talents, our abilities, our money, our riches, our family, our children, not for our selfish ambitions, not for our selfish desires, but for God's use, for God's glory. And the last one is, it shows that we are accountable for whatever has been given to us. So whatever we have, we have to be accountable and use everything for God's kingdom, for God's glory. Alright, so I hope you were encouraged. I just want to sing to you one song. It's called, I Give Myself Away. So it talks about that we cannot say that we don't have anything to give away. Every one of us has something to give away. We, if we cannot have a talent, we can even talk to people, encourage people, be an example, be a shining light, give someone something. Even if you don't have much, you can make a meal for them or you can, you can do something very small. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but God expects whatever we can do, to do it. And God will multiply, God will be glorified, and God will bless you. So I hope that you'll be encouraged. And uh, if you know this song, please sing with me. I gave myself away, I gave myself away, so you can use me. I give myself away, I give myself away, so you can use me. Here I am, here I stand, Lord my life is in your hands, Lord my longing to see your desires revealed in me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me take my heart take my life as a living sacrifice all my dreams all my plans lord i place them in your hands i give myself away i give myself away so you can use me i give myself away i give myself away so you can use me all right so i hope you'll be encouraged i just want to tell you while i was thinking this i was thinking about uh, the examples in the bible of how people in the old testament and the new testament how people gave themselves gave themselves for god's kingdom um think about abraham he he was a man after he was a father of faith he um he was committed to god and whatever god wanted him to do he gave he gave it and even when god said to sacrifice his own son he tried to do it and god said i see that you are faithful i see that you love me i see that you will give anything for me so even abraham and then uh, moses he said that uh, he doesn't have any talents he cannot talk moses said i cannot talk how can i go to pharaoh and tell 
him to let the people go. But Jesus said, don't worry, uh, Moses, I will go with you and I will send Aaron to help you. So God always sends something. God always has, another, has a plan. We have to only obey him and listen to him. So also another example, David, he came to see his brothers and he saw uh, um, the Goliath, the giant coming and speaking against God's people. And David didn't have anything. He only had a sling. He was a shepherd boy. He only had a sling. And he had he went to the stream and collected five stones. He trusted God with what he had. And then God was able to help get with the first stone he threw. The giant fell down. So God gave David victory. And he became a king. So if he hasn't done, if he didn't do that small act of obedience to God, and to use whatever he knows. He only knew how to look after sheep and he was looking after and protecting the sheep from lion and, and whoever animal that was coming against the sheep. He only knew that and he used that. Whatever he knew, he used that and God was pleased with him and God increased his abilities and God made him a king. So there are so many examples. Esther is a queen. Esther was a young girl and God chose her at the right time. He was, she went to the castle and he, she could have just kept quiet and not save God's people. But she didn't keep quiet. She was bold enough to go to the king and plead in behalf of his, her nation. So if she didn't do that part, God would not made her increase. God cannot use someone who doesn't listen to him and use their talents. So whatever talent, it can be very small. Whatever thing that God wants you to, God has given you in your life, use it for his glory, use it for his kingdom. And in the New Testament, there are so many. God got into Peter's boat and God told Peter, go and um, throw this... Um, throw the net to this side if uh, Peter didn't listen to Jesus then he would not have seen the miracle and then Peter would not have had a chance to follow Jesus and be his first disciple so many people so God uses so many people God uses the small big and everyone Jesus uses everyone so we only have to be willing vessels and God will use you so I hope you'll be encouraged as I was encouraged. This is not only for you. I'm talking to myself and encouraging myself and thinking of ways that I can be used for God's glory. So I hope you'll be encouraged and I, I, I pray and I hope that you'll be encouraged. And may God bless you.